Greetings this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All the glory, all the honor, all of the praises belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jehovah El Elyon, Most High God, Ruma the Wind, the Breath of God, the Holy Spirit. We bow before him in spirit and in truth this morning and say that there is no God beside Jehovah El Elyon, for he is the most high God. Blessings of those of you speaking this morning. We give God the glory, the honor, and all of the praises for yet being in the land of the living to decree and to declare that there's none like him. He keeps on doing great and mighty things for you and for I. He keeps on moving us, accelerating and advancing us and empowering, equipping us for his kingdom, for his glory. He keeps on shifting and aligning us, giving us that 180 degree turn back to him, that he may be glorified, that he may be edified, that he may be exalted. I want to tell you this morning, never give up the power of prayer. Never give up the power of prayer. Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. Saints, this morning I want to decree and to declare the blessings of God over each and every one joining this live this morning. Someone begin to tell God hallelujah this morning. Someone begin to tell him glory. Someone begin to just worship and adore and a strive unto his holy and righteous name. For he is majesty. He is Elohim. He is Yahweh, Alpha, Omega, the first, the last, the beginning and the end. He is the hope of glory, Jesus Christ living inside of each and every one of us. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah this morning. And we bless, adore, and strive unto his holy and righteous name. I decree and declare the favor of God upon each and every one of you joining us this morning. And those of you that will see this live recording in the future, from nation to nation, we decree and declare the abundance, the favor, and the blessings of God upon you. We decree and declare supernatural turnaround, change in your life. God is still shifting. God is still shaking. He's about to shift and shake even more, but he still sits high. He still looks low, and he gets all the glory, all the honor, all of the praises. Truly, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMessiah, Jehovah El Elyon, Most High God, Ruah the Wind, the Breath of God, get the glory. Now, I decree and declare divine intervention, supernatural intervention in your storm, in your trial, in your tribulation, in whatever it is you may be facing, whatever it is you may be experiencing, whatever it is you may be going through. I decree and declare God intervene in the midst of the plans of the enemy. I decree and declare purpose and destiny begins to come forth in your life. Alignment, what God has ordained and called you to. I decree and declare the perfect will of God beginning to manifest in your lives today. I decree and declare to you that Satan is bound. Lucifer is bound. That old dragon is bound in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That serpent, that scorpion, that snake, seed, root, and fruit, we bind him now. We bind every demonic force in the airway now, coming against your purpose, coming against what God has ordained your life to. We bind demonic forces in the airway, attacking you from the north, south, east, and west. But we decree and declare his glory ah, in the atmosphere. We decree and declare his kingdom sovereign, omnipotent, omnipresent, because God is a very present God. He's a sovereign God. He's everywhere at the same time. And we give him the glory. We give him the honor. We give him all the praises this morning. I decree and declare supernatural breakthrough ah, in your lives right now this morning. Whatever area you believe in God to be, give you breakthrough in, I decree and declare healing, signs, wonders, and miracles coming forth for you today in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of doubt. I bind that spirit that would cause you to throw in the towel. That spirit that would cause you to give in and to quit. Bind it now. I bind the attacks of the enemy. Black magic, voodoo, witchcraft. Bind envy, strife. Bind the spirit of murder in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But we decree and declare that you shall live and not die. And decree and declare the works of the Lord. 
the works of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just decree and declare kingdom wealth, kingdom abundance, ah, kingdom prosperity, kingdom advancement, kingdom acceleration, every impartation and every activation of God being released upon you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's it. We bind the spirit of light. We bind the spirit of lullaby, that spirit that caused you to be destitute, that poverty spirit. We bind it over your lives now. But we decree and declare kingdom wealth, kingdom abundance, kingdom prosperity, acceleration in your lives now. We decree and declare a shifting but God has purposed and ordained your life and to you, for you to line up with his will. Somebody just decree and declare thy kingdom come today, Father. Thy will be done in me, in earth, as it is in heaven. All the glory, all the honor, all of the praises belong to our heavenly Father, Jehovah El Elyon, who is the most high God, the sovereign God, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, the God that's everywhere at the same time. He said, if you're in hell, I'm there. If you're on the mountaintop, I'm there. Wherever you are, God is right there. Whether you know it or not, he is very present. He's always present. He's always there because he is the God of the past, the God of the present, and he is the God of the future. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, TikTok. Good morning to those of you joining us on BSLN. Whatever major platform you may be watching us on this morning, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praises for you taking the time this morning to get in his presence one more time. It's not about me. It's about Jehovah El Elyon, Most High God. He's the one that's getting all the glory. He's the one that's getting all the honor. He's the one that's getting all the praise. Why is that? Because he keeps on doing great and mighty things for you and I. He touched us this morning and started us out on a new day's journey, a day we've never seen before, and at 12.01 midnight, we'll never see again. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell him glory. His mercies are renewed every single morning, and he's renewing mercies, giving us that opportunity and that chance to get it right with him. One more day, one more moment, one more hour, one more minute, one more second. Amen. We decree and declare divine healing. Ah. Hmm. Let God touch your body. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring healing. I decree and declare the fire of God burning every infirmity, every sickness and every disease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that every tormenting spirit rising against you now be bound in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bind voodoo, hoodoo, black magic, witchcraft, psychic spirits. We bind them now. But we decree and declare his glory, his fire, his oil, his anointing, because the anointing destroys the yokes of the enemy. Somebody tell God hallelujah this morning. Somebody tell him glory this morning. I want to take the time to thank those of you that are joining us this morning. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to Daily Prayer and God's Living Word. We give God all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praises for you getting in his presence. I'm Apostle Barry Spates with Barry Spates Ministries. And we give God the glory for each and every one of you sons and daughters, national, excuse me, as well as international, joining this live this morning. Whether it's morning, noon, or night where you are, we thank God for advancement, for acceleration within you. We thank God that the kingdom of God is being imparted in you, spirit, soul, mind, and body. That's it. Fresh oil. Fresh fire. Ah. Fresh anointing. Decree it. Declare it. Ask God to renew you. What you had yesterday is gone. Ask God to give you a fresh outpouring of his anointing, a fresh outpouring of his fire. I'll saturate you freshly in the oil of the anointing. Amen? Because God is getting the glory. Thank those of you that's tapping that TikTok stream on your phone. Every time you tap your phone, you push this live stream out to an audience, a greater audience, will reach us greater. Thank those of you that's tapping that throughout the live. We thank you for doing that and ask you to continue to do it during the live. Thank those of you that's sharing uh, the link on Facebook. You may be tagging a family member, a relative, a friend. Thank you for doing that and we thank you for doing it throughout the live. Those of you that may be on YouTube that's sharing the link or that's clicking the like or the subscribe button, we thank you for, for clicking that like button, that subscription button. We thank you for 
following this ministry, those of you that's under this covering, we give God the glory, the honor, and the praises for each and every one of you and for what you do to make this ministry successful. We praise God for you. Thank those of you that's watching us on BSLN. You may be looking at us on the Apple TV or the Roku or the, or the uh, Fire TV. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for whatever era. You may be watching us on your mobile phone or on your tablet. We thank God for you getting in his presence and allowing him to shift and allow you. This is Wednesday morning. This is also prayer day. Wednesday is, our, is generally our prayer day when the Holy Spirit leads us to pray. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be interceding. We're going to be praying and we're going to be teaching on never give up the power of prayer. Luke 18 verses 1 through 8. For those of you that are taking notes, for those of you that are seeking a text, never give up the power of prayer. It is important that you realize and understand that there is strategic strategies. There is strategic alignment when you pray. When you will the sword of prayer, God gives us strategic strategies in his word on how to will the sword of prayer. And I woke up this morning, I was seeking the Holy Spirit. And the Lord spoke and said, Tell my sons and daughters, although they may be weary, although they may be tired, they may be on the verge of throwing in the towel and giving up, never, ever stop. Never, ever give up. Just when you give up, you might be on the verge of your breakthrough. You might be on the verge of seeing that miracle manifest in your life. What does it mean to never give up? Never give up is a powerful and motivational phrase that encourages perseverance, reliance, and determination in the face of challenges, setbacks, or obstacles. That's what giving up means. It means that in the face of obstacles, you should stay encouraged. You should persevere. Never stop. Never give up. You should remain. Keep your faith, your trust, totally in God in spite of what it looks like. It's, 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 it's like you could be hanging on the cliff and all of your weight is pulling you to release and let go. But remember this, God will put no more on you today than you can bear. That's his promise. If you're in the middle of a storm, guess what? God will not put more on you than you can handle. It may seem like it's more, but just ask God to strengthen you and to give you strategies. In other words, take your eyes off the situation. Take your eyes off the circumstance. Take your eyes off what you're facing and get them on God. Get in the Word. Get in His presence. You'll find that He'll relieve the stress. He'll relieve the anxiety. He'll relieve you of the worry. He'll shift you. He'll bring you. He'll give you that tenacity, that zeal to begin to excel and to advance. Right when you thought you weren't going to make it, he'll give you that extra push. He'll release a measure of his glory, a measure of his anointing to rejuvenate, to revive, to restore, to renew your spirit man. He will reposition you. and All of a sudden, you'll get that new breath. That breath the, that, that, that inner feeling of the Holy Ghost. You'll get that new charge, that, that, ex, the, that electric charge that comes to the word, that power, P-O-W-E-R, that authority, because power is deutimous, power is supernatural, power is fire. You get that power, that fire, that authority from God through his word to bring you through another moment, another day. Someone watching me in the may have just lost a loved one, don't give up. Don't stop, don't quit. God is too wise to make a mistake. He's a right now and he's an on-time God. Some of you may be saying, I needed him yesterday. No, no. You need him every day. You need him when he show up. 
But remember this, your timing is not his timing because our lives have been predestined. So God moves in his own timing. And all we got to do is be still and see the salvation of the Lord and watch him begin to move. Watch him begin to bring that shift. Watch him begin to bring that turnaround. Watch him begin to bring that change in our lives that we so desire. For there are many folk that are discouraged, the disappointed saints. They're looking for truth. There's so much fakeness out here. I was blessed this morning to have an opportunity to get on a live for just a moment and I began to just listen at some of the stuff that's being released and some of the stuff that's being poured into the minds of people. Such a strong spirit of delusion, such a strong spirit of, of, of trickery, such a strong spirit that will shift you, that will shift your heart, that's in full operation. And if we're not careful, we'll be deceived by some of the stuff that's being released. I heard some things that is not sound doctrine, some things that will shift, some things that will really brainwash women to believe a lie of the enemy. This is why we have to be so careful what we allow to be poured in our spirits. Let me tell you something. There is only one creator. His name is God Almighty. Let me tell you something else. God created man and then woman. There's no ifs, no what's, no ends about it. He created male and then female. He didn't put the woman before the man. He put the man before the woman. Even in the spirit realm, he created the man first. He made male and then female in the spirit. Then he created Adam and Eve. So all this stuff I'm hearing online, if you're not careful, it'll shift your spirit. and It'll have you thinking incorrectly. But we teach sound doctrine. I'll give you scriptures to back up the word of God for a reason so that there's no question in your spirit who God is, his purpose. But the Lord just allowed me to go online this morning just to hear, and I mean, I stumbled across it. I wasn't looking, I wasn't searching for nothing, but I just happened to stumble across this teaching and I said, wow, we have to be ever so careful what we allow to be poured in our spirit. And let me tell you something, saints. When the enemy is trying to discourage you when the enemy is trying to distract you, he begin to pour things in you to shift the, your thinking, to push you. He'll make you think you're coming toward God. And that familiar spirit will be pushing you away from God. That familiar spirit will be pushing you far, far away. And at the same time, you think you're gaining ground. You think you're gaining understanding. You think you, you're gaining newness. But let me tell you something. If you want understanding, get in the word of God. If you want a relationship, get in the presence of God. This is the reason it is so important to read the word of God for yourself. Then you know sound doctrine. Then you know sound teaching. Don't take somebody else's word based upon their understanding because you don't know where they got it from. But read the word. What do we do on this live stream? We get in the word of God we decree and declare the word of God so that there's no question in your mind about what is sound the Bible says men would heap unto themselves having itching ears they would turn away from the truth they would become lovers of themselves lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God Saints, we're living in that day right now. I want to share something with you. Many are wondering what's going on. Many are wondering about all the shaking that's happening right now. We're in the day. We're in the season. We're in the timing of the pouring of the Holy Spirit. We're in the timing of intensified release 
of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. We're in this season where God is really pouring the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ah, he's pouring the fire upon those that will truly surrender, that will truly yield, that will truly embrace all of who he is. He's really releasing sound doctrine. The Bible says if it wasn't for the coming of Christ, the very elect would be deceived. This is the reason we must stay in the presence of God, in the Word of God, and believe the Word of God for ourselves and ask God to pour it in our hearts, in our spirits. What He's speaking directly to me, what He's speaking directly to you, and hold on to that. And when you hear something that doesn't sound like God, nine times out of ten, it's not God. It's just a form of fake. And many people are being deceived by the work of the enemy. But I say to you today, don't quit. I say to you today, never give up. Never stop. It doesn't matter what it looks like. If it costs you your life, stay with God. If it costs everything you've got, stay with God. Never, ever give up. Never, ever stop serving him. Because gain is greater with God than it will ever be with man, with the enemy. Gain is greater. You will gain more with God and staying with him than you will gain in any other aspect of your life. Let me tell you something. Monetary things are just for seasons. That season comes, saints, and that season goes. It doesn't last forever. But we've got to be in the divine place of God, in the divine timing of God. What is forever is eternal life. When you accept Jesus Christ, you have a spiritual and a heavenly guarantee that you will reign with him forever. Never ending, never ceasing. You will be with Christ. And that's not to say at the end time but that's right now you, your your desire is to know more of who he is to know more of him thank you Holy Ghost thank you Holy Spirit God is shifting God is shaking saints more shifts more shaking is coming because this is the year of the shift this is the year of the shake doors are open promises are coming forth so don't be weary about what's happening around the world keep your eyes on God keep your eyes on the Father because more is to come God is just getting started let me say that again God is just getting started it's not over it's just getting started amen judgment is coming to the house of God judgment is coming to the body of Christ those who will live holy, those who will live saved, judgment is coming. God has his reward for you. His reward is in his hand. But those that will not comply to sound doctrine, God has his judgment for them as well. Amen. So fear not. Keep your faith and your trust in the Father. We're going to pray, and then we're going into the Word. Now, Father, this morning as we enter your presence, we thank you for another opportunity to bow before you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for another opportunity to say hallelujah, to say glory to your name. We thank you for allowing us to yet be in the land of the living and to acknowledge unto you that you are Alpha, you are Omega. Father, you're the first, the last, you're the beginning, you're the end. We bow before you this morning and we give you all the glory, ah, all the honor all the praise he said in the word they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth the spirit is the holy spirit the truth is your word righteousness and right standing where we've sinned where we've faulted where we've fallen by the wayside this morning we repent right now and father we ask your forgiveness we ask you to shift us and to align us to bring us in the appropriate alignment 
according to your word. This morning, we give you the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise in advance. As we enter your presence, we say, Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Ah, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, Father. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Ah, and we bless you now. We adore you now. We lift you on high, Father. We give you adoration, and we give you exaltation. We exalt you on your throne, for you are high and lifted up above the heavens. All of the glory, the honor, and the praise belongs to you, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Father, for releasing your anointing, that anointing that destroys the yokes of the enemy. We thank you for your glory that hovers, ah, in the atmosphere. Your glory that comes forth through us. We thank you that we're made for your glory to bow and to worship you. We thank you, Father, for the word. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. We thank you that your word will do that thing that you've said it to and that it will not come back void, but it will fulfill all that you've ordained from the very beginning of foundation. Father, we thank you now for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. We thank you for the atonement, the blood sacrifice, the Lamb of God. We give you glory for him now. We thank you that we're saved by his blood. Father, we thank you for reconciliation, for bringing us back to the place, for shifting us, bringing transformation, for bringing trans and transforming us to be more like you each and every day for that this morning we give you the glory father we thank you right now for every miracle for signs and wonders that manifest in our lives we thank you for healing us spirit soul mind and body that one that's troubled in their mind we thank you for removing dementia we thank you for removing all timers disease we thank you father for restoring their mind for you said in the word thou would keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee we stand on your word this morning we bind the spirit of suicide we bind the spirit of depression and oppression bind it now in the mighty name of jesus we bind that anxiety spirit we bind schizophrenia and bipolar we bind every spirit that would attack the mind the spirit the soul and the body we bind all of these weights lift them up off of your sons and daughters. All of these addictions, that they're these strongholds that's holding your sons and daughters, we break the yoke of the enemy off of them by the power and the authority given unto us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every stronghold and every yoke be broken. Every thought, every high thought and imagination, Father, that exalts itself against the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, we cast it down now in the mighty name of Jesus. But we say, let your glory hover. Shift us and align us with your will today. Now, Father, we vow to give you all the glory this morning, all the honor, all of the praises. And we thank you for fresh oil, a fresh fire, ah, a fresh anointing being released upon us now. Pour your fire, your Holy Ghost in fire, ah, upon us now. Pour your fire that burns everything that's unlike you. Purify us in the mighty name of Jesus. Cleanse us through the Holy Ghost and fire. Now we vow to give you the glory this morning, Father. We vow to give you the honor this morning. We vow to give you the praise. Father, we vow to never take your glory. Now we ask you to bind Satan. And you said whatever we bind in earth, you bind also in heaven. Bind every demonic force in the airway. Bind every attack strategically coming against your will for your sons and daughters right now. Release your glory. Release your fire. Release your oil against every demon in the atmosphere. Let the fire of God consume every spirit that's unlike you now. You said at the name of Jesus, 
demons begin to tremble. Let them tremble right now in fear of who you are, God. We give you the glory. Ah, huh? oh, we give you the honor for it. Ah, huh? Father, we give you the praise right now. We bless you. We adore and we strive unto your holy and righteous name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, that son and that daughter, nationally as well as internationally, is going through now. Give them a peace in their spirit. Shift their spirit and align them right now with what you're doing. Give them understanding where they like understanding. Give them wisdom where they like wisdom. And give them knowledge where they like knowledge. But you said in Proverbs, get wisdom. Get knowledge, but with all thou getting, get understanding. Release it unto us now. But we know that it is a gift that comes from you, Father. And we thank you for the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding, the gift of counsel, might, the fear of the Lord. We thank you for the gift that is the Spirit of the Lord, the seven lamps of fire around your throne. Ah, we give you glory for it now. We give you honor in advance for shifting us. We thank you for open doors. We thank you for making ways out of no ways, for providing what your sons and your daughters need. We pray right now for every nation on these lines, nationally as well as internationally. We pray that your glory and your fire hover in their atmosphere. We come up against every sickness and every disease nationally as well as internationally. We pray for all 196 nations. We repent for her sins right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for America. We pray for Israel. We pray right now grace and mercy as we repent for the sins of the nations. We pray for everyone represented on this live right now. Those, Father, that will see it in the future cover them in grace and mercy still shield them save them that's lost you said in the word in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved we ask you to save the lost as they seek you according to Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 we decree and declare salvation of the lost we decree and declare that Satan is defeated Father, you're exalted. We decree and declare that the enemy take his hands off of everyone that belong to you now, Father. Ah, woo. and we give you the glory in advance. Let your Holy Ghost fire consume every spirit that's unlike you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we vow to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. Now, we exalt you above Lucifer. We exalt you above Satan. We exalt you above the devil. Above every spirit that will not bow before you, we exalt you, Father. And we bow before you in spirit and in truth. For you said, they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, we thank you for breaking generational curses. We thank you for removing the curse of the enemy. Jesus became the curse that we may be delivered, that we may be free. He became poor that we may be rich. We decree and declare your word that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that we should lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you. Father, we stand on your word. For you said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. Thank you for breaking generational curses. Thank you for breaking yokes. Thank you for setting the captive free. Thank you for opening new doors. Thank you for making ways out of no ways. Thank you for being a shelter in the time of stone. Thank you that the earth is the Lord and the world that they dwell therein, according to Psalms 24. Thank you that the King of glory shall come in, according to Psalms 24. We give you the glory in advance. Ah, we give you the honor in advance. Father, we give you the praise right now. Ah, in advance. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. We thank you that we will never give up the power of prayer. We stand on your word right now, and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Father. We give you all the praises. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now that secret prayer, that hidden prayer, that one that we don't know about, that one that have that sickness that they haven't shared with anyone, that one that's in the ICU in the hospital, that one that's in the mental institution, Father, that one that's in the prison cell. We pray for them right now. Cover them in the blood. We pray for mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers on these lives. We pray for our parents our close relatives, 
bring unity, bring oneness according to your will amongst your brethren in Christ. We pray for the fine foe, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. We pray for sons and daughters in the gospel of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior right now. We pray for those that are rejecting religion and tradition and coming into alignment with who they are in you, Father. Pray for them right now. Cover them in the blood. We thank you for mercy and grace over those that have not come into the knowledge of who you are, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy now. We give you glory. We give you honor. Ah, we give you praise. We pray for this government, America. We pray for governments all around the world. Ah, woo. We pray, move by your power, move by your spirit. Be graceful and merciful. Allow that thing that you've ordained, and that thing that you, oh, you've, you've predestined to begin to come forth now. We pray for our president and vice presidents and presidents and vice presidents all around the world, ministers and prime ministers, kings and queens, whatever their leadership is. You said pray for our leaders. We pray for them now. We pray for the generals of the gospel. Move by your power and your authority. We pray for Christian born-again believers right now. We pray right now, your grace and mercy over them. Give them strategic strategies in the word. Advance and accelerate your kingdom in them now. Father, we give you the glory in advance. It is in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody begin to tell God hallelujah this morning. Ah, fresh fire. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. Ah, woo. The fire of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, Someone on this live, you're being healed in your eyes right now. See the fire of God. You, you think it's a burning, it's a stinging in your eyes. That's the fire of God. God is healing your eyes. You've got glaucoma. The Lord is healing you right now. I see him healing. I feel his presence. I said, ah, fresh anointed. Ah, about Shandah. Fresh oil. Ah. Fresh fry. There's an anointing for miracles. Oh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Me. I said, saw someone said me. God is healing glaucoma right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I see the Lord. He's healing someone's ears. You're having trouble hearing. I see the fire of God on your ears. That burning you're feeling. That's God. Ah, He's healing you right now. He heals God. He still do miracles. Uh, he's doing miracles right now. Uh, someone you've been having pain in your belly. The Lord is healing you right now. That usa goes right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, someone you've been having acid reflex real bad. God is subsiding it right now. Ah, God, I'm about to stand up. In the mighty name of Jesus, there's an anointing for miracles this morning. We thank you for every miracle. Ah, I'm about to stand up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone you're believing God to move right now you need a miracle right now there's a miracle anointing being released right now in the mighty name of Jesus miracle anointings if you believe in God for miracles in your life begin to tell him hallelujah Woo. Ah, begin to tell him glory begin to bless him now begin to praise him now for God is shifting right now hallelujah Holy Spirit hallelujah Holy Spirit hallelujah Holy Spirit Father we give you the glory Ah, whew. saturate the atmosphere with your fire, with your glory, with your oil. For the Lord is opening doors right now. Some of you need God to move immediately. The Lord is moving immediately for you. It's going to happen so quickly. You're going to go from that place of worry and fear to that place of worship and thanks. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm looking in the Spirit and I see the Lord handing someone keys keys are being released access God is granting access ah thank you Holy Spirit I see the keys being released some of you have been dreaming about keys God is granting you access in the spirit ah he's opening spiritual doors for you he's moving supernaturally for you thank you Holy Spirit someone you're on this live you've been denied access for residence the Lord is saying go try again but this time I'm going before you God is going to speak in your spirit and tell you when to move and when the Lord speak, move right then. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Move at the very moment. For you're entering into that season of promise, of manifestation. Man is saying no, but God is saying yes. Man is saying I can't, but God is saying you will. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo. 
fresh anointed, fresh oil. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone you're in an abusive relationship. The Lord is fit to bring you out of that. Ah, I see the I see the verbal abuse. Some of you are not only in a verbal abusive relationship, but you're in a physical abusive relationship. The Lord is about to deliver you. The hand of God is moving right now. The hand of God is moving right now to bring you out, to deliver you, to set you free. God says enough. You hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, it's enough. Now I'm intervening. You've tried it your way. Now we're going to do it my way, said the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody give God glory. Ah. Somebody tell him hallelujah this morning. That one watching me that's on the verge of giving up. You can't stop. You can't quit. You can't give up. Someone is watching me. You're in a repentive state. That's God. That's God. You're in a repentive state. You're giving in. You're throwing in the tower. You're turning from sin and iniquity. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Ah. Allow God's will to manifest. That's you. Tell him thank you. You're in that place of surrender. You've got your hands up, Lord, I yield. Ah, ah, Rabah, Father, we give you the glory in advance. We give you the honor in advance. We give you the praise in advance. Fresh anointed. Fresh anointed. Ah. Somebody on this live, you're shaking right now. You're shaking. Now the Lord is shaking you right now. Go through the season of shaking because God is shifting you. He's shifting you right now. The fire of God is on some of you like never before right now. Ah, woo. Ah, But we're in the season of the fire. You feel like you're about to burn up. Ah, fire be upon you now. Ah, woo. Rabbi Shanda. Fresh importations. Fresh activations be upon you now. You're being aligned in spirit. Your spirit is aligning with the will of the Father. What God is ordaining you to. That desire you once had, the Lord is taking it away from you. Because he's giving you a new desire. He's giving you a new insight. He's changing you. There's a transformation of the mind taking place in you now. That's God. He's shifting you. He's touching some of your hearts. He's giving you orders and telling you what to do. That's it. He's ordering your steps. He's telling you how to move. Obey. Obey in this season. Obedience to God in this season is better than sacrifice. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some some of you, the Lord is telling you not to do something. Be obedient. Be obedient. That's not you. That's the Holy Spirit of conviction telling you to be still. Wait on God. It's not in your ability. It's not going to work the way you think it's going to work. Be still. Wait on the Father. Move with God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's the word. That's God's word. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's it. Let God give you strategic strategies in the word. Let him lead and guide you. Let him open the door. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, there is a shaking. There is a shaking. Ah, I'm sensitive in the spirit. A mighty move of God. Ooh, this is a move like never before. God, about ah, This is a mighty move of God. When this move happens, you're going to know it can only be a God. There's such a shaking. I'm seeing in the spirit a massive earthquake. I mean, it's massive. I don't know where it is, but I'm seeing it in the spirit. And this is such a shaking. Ah, woo. It's going to get the attention of the whole world. This move. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're going to know this is God. I don't know when. I don't know where. But I'm I'm feeling it in the spirit. I'm feeling the shaking. The shift. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God is, God is, God is moving across the earth. God is moving across the land. He's doing it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, woo, such a shake. Ah, you can literally feel it in the spirit. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell God glory. God does nothing except he reveal his secrets to the prophet. You've got the secret. It's been revealed. God is getting ready to move mightily. He's getting ready to shake like never before. 
Saints, prepare your hearts. Begin to pray. Begin to intercede for grace and mercy in this shift and in this move of God. Begin to pray for grace and mercy. Cover relatives and family members and friends, those near and far. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When the Lord gave a prophetic word, that is the opportunity for you to begin to intercede and to pray. Grace and mercy over family members. Grace and mercy. The will of God will prevail. But in your mouth is the power and the authority to plead the blood of Jesus over family members and relatives and friends. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody give God the glory. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Never, ever give up. The power of prayer. There is so much authority when you pray. There's so much deutimous power when you pray. There's power that comes supernaturally. And there's power that comes verbally. Let me say that again. There's power that comes supernaturally. Deutimus. There's power that comes verbally. When your life begins to line up with the will and the purpose of God, the Lord will speak through you. And what he puts in your mouth, when you decree it into the atmosphere, it comes with authority to shift the very atmosphere. When God speaks through you, he allows Deutimus to come forth. Every demon, every principality, every yoke and every stronghold can be broken when you speak what thus saith the Lord. Because it comes forth with power and authority. And the word says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. So when you release out of your mouth, the spirit of God goes forth and begins to accomplish ah, what God has ordained to manifest. It begins to accomplish what God has purposed in that timing, in that season, in that right now. His will can come forth because you surrender and allow him to speak through you. You surrender and conform to the image of Christ. You conform to the will of the Father. The enemy don't want you conforming. He don't want you to be empowered. He don't want you to shift and be aligned as God is ordaining your life. But I want to share with you this morning a parable Jesus spoke. And in this parable that he released, he talks about not quitting, not giving up, not stopping. Turn to Luke chapter 18, look at verse number 1. Luke chapter 18, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you, ah, God is still pouring, just receive. Thank you Holy Ghost, God is still pouring, just receive. Thank those of you that are sharing this live. Thank those of you that's joining this line. God is still pouring. Saints, this is the season of the shifting. Ah, all about it. This is the season of the shaking. Mm. He's pouring right now. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Judgment the Lord is saying, it's starting in my house. Judgment the Lord is saying, it's starting in my house. Judgment the Lord is saying, is starting in my house. I will shake my house like never before, saith the Spirit of the Lord. He says, I will expose, I will uncover, and I will reveal like never before in this season, saith the Spirit of the Lord. I will pull the wool. I can even see the cover being pulled back. You thought you saw a cover. You thought you saw a revealing, but not like you're getting ready to see. Not like you're getting ready to see. God is getting ready to really expose, right. to really uncover. I literally see the cover being pulled back in the spirit. Some of you are fallen people that you're getting ready to find out things you never imagined. The Lord is getting ready to really expose and really uncover. He said, judgment shall start at the house of God. We are getting ready to see him move in such a miraculous and such a mighty way. Blessings and favor will come. But God will reveal. 
he will expose. He will uncover. So get ready because it's coming. Where you've been hiding, you will not be able to hide anymore. Because God is shifting. We have no secrets with God. In the darkest place you could ever be, God is very present. God is right there. In the worst sin you could ever commit, God is very present. Because the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. There are four beasts around the throne of God. And on those beasts are eyes. God sees everything. He doesn't miss anything. But he's seeing. Now he's exposing. Ah, he's uncovering. Ah, he's exposing and he's uncovering everything. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look at Luke 18, verse number 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought to always pray and not faint. In other words, Jesus says, pray continuously, never, ever faint. Another word for faint is never, ever quit, never, ever stop, never, ever give up. To faint means to cease. It means to stop. It means to give up. Wherever you are in your destiny walk, wherever you are in what God is doing in your life, in your process, don't stop. Remain faithful in that place in God. What God is doing in your life, he's shifting you. He's elevating. He's not building your flesh. He's maturing your spirit. Let me say that again. What you're going through, your flesh is not going to like it. Your flesh is going to become angry. It's going to become upset. Because what God is doing to you and in you is not about your flesh. It's about maturing your spirit. It's going to hurt, but it's about maturing you. In other words, we graduate at the 12th grade. But when God matures our spirit, we go through a process. You see, when you go to school, you don't want to study. You don't want to spend the quality time. But you know if you don't get it done, you won't graduate. Well, see, God taking you through a process, and the process is killing the will of the flesh so that the will of the kingdom can begin to manifest. Let me say that again. The process is killing the will of the flesh so the will of the spirit can begin to manifest. So what God has purposed and ordained your lives to can begin to come forth. That's why you're shifting. Oh, that's why there's a shift. Spiritual maturity, that's it. He's maturing you spiritually. He's building you spiritually. He's imparting in you, aligning you with his will. Not our will, but the will of the Father. Look at verse number two. So don't quit. Don't faint. Don't give up. Saying, now Jesus says, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God and neither regarded man. A judge. He didn't fear God and he didn't have any respect or regard for man. See? See? Watch the next verse, number three, in Luke 18. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuous coming she weary me. Her persistence, her continuous coming, and this is a parable, before this judge, because she kept saying, avenge me of my adversary, the judge said, you know what? If I don't do something, she's going to weary me. She's going to wear me down. She's not going to stop. She's going to be persistent and continuous. So in the parable, the judge begins to avenge her. Look at the next verse. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them notice something the judge was an unjust judge the judge was an unrighteous judge he said I don't fear God I don't fear man 
but he still avenged this woman of her adversary. But now, verse 7 in Luke 18 tells us, you are the elect of God. You are the chosen seed of God, a royal priesthood, a royal generation, a chosen vessel, diplomats, ambassadors of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Surely, whatever you're facing, surely, whatever you're experiencing, surely, whatever you're going through, God is going to avenge you. God is going to bring you out. Now watch this. It won't be as quick as you think it ought to be. It won't be as fast as you think it ought to be. It won't even be the way you think it's going to happen. Because God says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. So whatever you got in your little mind of how the Lord is going to do this, release that. Let that go. And say, Father, your will be done. Just say, Father, I surrender to you. I, I know what I think. I know how I feel you're going to move. But Father, I surrender what I think. I, I'm, I'm going to stop looking at you doing it the way I want it done. And I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to keep faith in you. I'm just going to rely and depend on you. Because the way I want it done may not even be the way you planned. The person I think you're going to use may not even be the person you even spoke to. And maybe you spoke to them and they're, they're being rebellious. They're being disobedient and they won't hear your voice. But there's one that you're going to use. There's one that you're going to speak to that's going to hear you and that's going to obey. They're not going to make excuses, but they're going to comply uh, with the Holy Spirit. They're going to comply with your voice, Father. So just in case that's you, somebody said me, just in case that's you and you're looking for God to move a certain way, just trust him. Don't give up. Don't stop. To give up is to quit. But you've got to stand. Even though times may be weary. See, now, 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 now let me have some of you with what I mean when I say don't give up. Keep your trust and your faith in God. Don't lose faith. What does it mean to lose faith? It means to stop believing the word of God. It means to stop trusting what God is saying to you through the word. When you lose faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the more the word of God you hear, the more it fills your faith. So when you lose faith, you stop trusting the word. And when you stop trusting the word, you stop trusting God. So you've got to stay. Even though you can't see how God's going to move, even though you can't see how God's going to do it, trust him anyway. In many cases, we have no options but to trust God. But the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Faith in God, faith in the word of God. We trust God day and night. We don't stop. We don't give up. We live by his word. Many folk that don't have faith don't have a life of reading the word. They don't have a life of studying the word. They have not developed a relationship with the Father. This is the reason they don't have faith, because faith comes through the word of God. You cannot believe what you have not studied. You cannot believe what you have not imparted in your spirit. See, when you read the word of God, God's word goes in your spirit. It goes in your heart. It gives you hope. It builds you spiritually matures you spiritually. That's it. Wait on God. Because it's not in your timing. Some of you may be in a stripping process. It may appear that you're losing everything. Let God have his way. Let him take you through this. He's removing the things you don't need so he can put back the things you need. And I can assure you, if you're going through a stripping right now, when God gets done, if you remain faithful, your latter will be greater than your former. What you had will be better than what you what you what you got now will be nothing compared to what God will give you for remaining faithful, for trusting him. Remember the story of Job. Remember how God took Job through. He went through a storm. He lost his children. He lost his cattle. 
You lost everything. But in return, because he remained faithful, God blessed him with double. He gave him even more because he stood. He didn't allow what he didn't understand to affect his relationship with God. Many of us make the mistake of leaving God because we don't understand. The word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit, with all your heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. That is the wisdom and the knowledge of man. Don't trust that. But in all thy ways, trust him, and he will direct our path. God will strategically lead and guide you the right way according to his word. He will lead and guide you the right way according to as he's purposed your life. So go through your Jericho experience because on the other side of the Jericho experience, on the other side of the stripping, you go into Jordan. Jordan is the place of promise. When you go into Jordan, that's when the Lord began to release what he promised he would do. A lot of times we get a prophetic word from the Lord and we'll trust God because the word is so rich. It, it burns in our spirit. It burns in our heart. Have you ever heard anybody say, the word, did you feel how the word burned today? How it burned in my spirit? That word burns in your heart. It burns in your spirit. Simply because of the fact that you believe God. Now, the enemy is going to come and he's going to try to shake your faith. He's going to try to make you doubt that close relative, that close family member, that close friend. They don't even realize that what they're saying, they allow the enemy to use them to, in, to infect you or to plant doubt in your spirit. But you've got to overcome that by the word of your testimony. You've got to overcome that by the word of God. You've got to keep what the what the word says out front. Well, Apostle Space, how do I do that? You decree and declare, Father, I know what I see, but this is not what you promised. I don't have to accept what I see. I only have to accept what you promised. Let me, let me, let me help some of you with that. I don't care what it looks like. This is not what you promised me, Lord. I don't have to accept what I'm seeing right now. I'm holding on to the promise. I'm holding on to what you spoke in your word. I'm holding on to the prophetic word you gave me in my spirit. It might get dark at times. It may get weary at times. I may have to cry at times, but I'm not going to worry because I know what you said. I know what you spoke. It went in my heart. It did burn. And because it burned, it's still there. Uh, uh, in, in other words, I'm not looking for nothing and I'm not looking at nothing but the promise. Oh, somebody somebody say that. Somebody decree that. I'm not looking at nothing but the promise of God. Although it may be weary, although I may be in a process, you got to tell yourself, I'm not looking at the process. I'm looking at the solution in the process. I'm looking at how God is shifting me, how God is maturing me, how God is accelerating and advancing me. I'm holding on to what God spoke into my heart. I don't care if no one else believes. I've got to believe it for myself. Let me tell you something, saints. There comes a time in your walk and in your relationship with Christ, you're going to walk with him alone. Because the Bible says, he that would follow me must pick up his cross and bear it alone. Your friends are not going to be there. Your mother and your father, although they can see what you're going through, they're not going to be able to help you. You're going to have to trust God all by yourself. Some of you don't believe that. But the day will come when you will have to walk one-on-one -on -one with God. You'll have to trust him totally for yourself. Can I get a witness? That day will come when those folk that say they love you, you reach and you look for them, and they won't be nowhere to be found. They'll be gone. You'll be like, well, where's so-and-so and so? What is it? They don't call me no more. I was talking to someone the other day, and they say, my friends, don't call me no more. I say, well, God has you in the process. 
Why would they just walk away and do me like that? God has you in a process. God separated you and he separated them because they mean you no good. See, but God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That's why you can't stop. That's why you can't give up. That's why you pray. Because there's so much power. There's so much authority in prayer. The apostle speaks, how do I pray? I pray what God's word says. I apply his word to my life. You apply the word of God, apply the word of God to your life. That's how you pray. You speak what God's word says over your life, over your family, over your job, over your finances. You speak what the word of God says and you stand on that word. Not some promise that your friend broke. Not that promise somebody said they were going to do this, this, and that, and they didn't do it. And you say they lied. Well, wait a minute now. Maybe they didn't lie. Maybe God just put them in a stressful situation. And although their intent was good, that wasn't the plan of God for your life. So to stop them, God had to intervene. But see, when you intervene in the plan of God, God will intervene in your plan. So and, and in other words, you got to stand and trust God for yourself. See, we have to learn to stand on our own two feet. So that individual watching me is contemplating suicide. Your life is not your own. It belongs to God and to those that God has put around you. It belongs to him. The word of God says you shall live and not die. And decree and declare the works of the Lord. You've tried, but you can't succeed because that, that's not the will of God for your life. His will will begin to manifest when you fully surrender. Huh? His purpose will begin to manifest when we fully surrender. Notice it. Notice in verse number seven in Luke 18. And shall not God avenge his own elect? You are the elect. Which cry day and night. You cried unto him day and night. Though he bear long with them. He's with you while you're crying. He's watching you cry. He's watching you gripe and moan and complain. God says, oh, you want to be all right. I know what I'm doing. You don't understand. See, let me let me help you with something. When we start going through something in life, it's our flesh that don't want to go through it. It's our flesh that don't understand what in the world is God doing. It's the flesh. But if we get in the word, see, the word brings the flesh into subjection. The word causes the flesh to surrender. See, the word causes the flesh to stop, to be still. See, the word builds your spirit and causes your flesh to have discipline. That's why God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, self-discipline, self-control. Look at verse number eight. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Uh-oh. So although it seemed like it's been a long time, when God comes in, whoop, it'll happen so fast. It'll happen so quickly. You'll be like, wow. Look how fast God moved. Look how quick God intervened. Look how quick God shifted this. To you, it seemed like you went through it for 10 years. It's just been 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months. But while you're going through it, it seemed like an agonizing time. It seems like a time is just hard to, to, to endure. Like, Lord, I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. God says, just, just, just sleep and rest in me. Just rest in my word. You'll find I'll guide you through it. I'll give you strategic strategies in my word. I'll bring you through whatever it is, step by step. Because see, the steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. And it says God goes before them to make the cricket places straight. So while you're going through, as God is leading and guiding you, well, Pastor, how does God lead and guide you? When you get up in the morning, he gives you instructions. Open your Bible, read this. Well, Lord, I don't want to read that. We'll read it anyway. It's going to bring you through today. 
Whoop. See, you don't want to read it, but you don't know it's the meal, it's the is the is the spiritual meal you need to get you through this day. It's the spiritual meal you need to get you through this week. See, strategically, God give you everything you need every day to get you through the day. Now, see, God knows what's going to happen before the day ends. He knows what's going to happen when he wakes you up in the morning. All day long, he knows what's coming. So he give you what you need in the word to keep you standing. But if you won't read the word, you have nothing to rely on. See, the word is quick. That's why you can speak and things move out. Things happen fastly, see? When you speak the word, sometimes things will happen real quick. Why? Because God says, my word is quick. See? That's why when you release it, things happen immediately. Demons flee immediately because the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So see, it's power in prayer. God's word is loaded with power. God's word is loaded with fire. See, so when you release it, fire can come forth and devour every demon in the atmosphere. It can come forth and devour every attack of the enemy rising against you when you release the word of God. Now watch this. Well, Apostle, I release the word of God and nothing happens. Well, are you releasing it from within your heart? Have that word become a part of you and have you become a part of the word? In other words, are you believing it with your mind or are you believing it with your heart? There's a difference. There are a lot of folk with book knowledge. They can teach and preach all day long. But there's no life in the word when they release it into the atmosphere. The difference is they have book knowledge. But they don't have that relationship. See, they teach it because they've studied. But when you've got a relationship with the father. Now when you teach, you teach with authority. You teach with experience. Because what's in you can come forth, which is God. What's in you, see, God in, God out. Oh, let, let, let me say that again. Somebody say that. God in me, God out of me. See? So if you put God's word in you, God's word comes out. So now when you release, because you believe it, it comes out with power. It comes out with authority. So now when you pray, Father... Your word says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I thank you for strengthening me. Ah, you feel that? Ah. I thank you for molding me. I thank you for shaping me, bringing me closer to you. Your word says, I can do this, but I need your help. God says, well, thank you for asking for my help. Did not I tell you in Matthew 7 and 7, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door. So thank you for asking for my help. Now I can dispatch angels to come down and battle on your behalf. And intervene in the plots and the plans of the enemy. Because you're speaking my language. You're speaking back to me. What I said in my word. Now since you, my word is in your heart. Now when you speak, it shifts the atmosphere. Now when you speak, it brings change. It turns things around. Now when you speak, you speak from the spirit of who you are, the mature measure of who you are. Now the attacks of the enemy don't phase you no more because you're more spirit than physical. See, a lot of us fail. We, we, we seem to think we're more physical than spiritual. But see, as you grow with God, you become more spiritual than physical. You walk in the power of God. You walk in the authority that God has given you. You learn. You become who you really are in Christ. See, as I've shared with you many times, when you're a born-again believer, you're the enemy of Satan. Because Jesus can come inside you and empower you. Jesus lives inside of you. He equips you. He gives you deutimous power. See, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you have deutimous power. So the flesh begins to die because who Christ is in you begins to resurrect. So now when you speak, he speaks. Now when you release, the power of the Holy Spirit comes forth. Because Adam is dying. The Adam ancient nature is dying. The Eve nature is dying. And the Spirit of Christ 
is beginning to manifest. His glory is beginning to come forth in you because you're, 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 you're maturing now. You, you understand that I need God more than I thought I needed him. I need him to strengthen me even in the middle of my storm. I need him to strengthen me in the middle of my trial, in the middle of my tribulation. I need his strength. So because God says you need me, I can intervene. That's it, spiritual maturity, see? See, but while you're going and you're maturing in the process, oh, your flesh is fighting. Your flesh is kicking. You, you, it's like a horse. You can lead him to water, but you can't make him drink. You can hit him with a two-by-four and knock him out, but you won't make him drink that water. Some of us are bucking. We're fighting God. I woke up this morning and the Lord put a particular person in my spirit. And the Lord said, they've disobeyed me. And they've gone about doing what they want to do. And I've told them to come back because what I have for them is greater where they were, not where they are. I'm giving you fire, not an illusion. I'm giving you kingdom, not an illusion. I'm giving you power. I'm talking to somebody right now, not an illusion. If you'll just wait on me and stop trying to rush the process, I build slowly, but I build sound, saith God. I build slowly. I build sound. When I get through building you, you'll know, and the people around you will know that I'm in you. They'll know that I lead you. They'll know that I guide you. Because I pour in you slowly, but I advance my kingdom inside of you. I advance my power. I advance my fire when you release. Because you sat at my feet. You sat at my table. You supped with me. And because you obeyed me, I can advance and accelerate you. But those that will disobey, God says, you'll look up one day and you'll say, I was in the right place. I, whoo, I'm talking to somebody right now. And I left that place because I saw something I didn't like. I left that place because I heard something I didn't like. But the word is not for your flesh. See, the word causes the flesh to reject. The devil will speak through your flesh and deceive you and trick you and trick you out of your blessing and trick you out of the power and the authority that God wants to pour in your life because you hear something you don't like. But see, God is not preaching to please your flesh. He's not teaching to please your flesh. He's building your spirit. He's building the part of you that refuses to mature, the part of you that refuses to grow, that spirit of who he is. He's not concerned with that part that's going back to the clay. He's, he's raising up sons and daughters in the spirit. They will move in supernatural power. They'll open their mouth and the glory will shift the whole atmosphere. Signs and wonders and miracles will happen just because they spoke what thus saith the Lord. See, when he mature your spirit, your flesh ain't gonna wanna bend. Your flesh ain't gonna wanna bow. Now, the fact, your flesh going to kick against the prick. Your flesh going to say, I'm tired of listening to it. Because, see, what you think you're hearing one thing, but in actuality, God is speaking something totally different in your heart. Well, he's speaking something totally different in your spirit. He's maturing you, and you don't even have enough sense to realize you've grown. Then you'll wake up one day and you'll say, man, I'm sitting here, but I'm not, I'm not really getting nothing. I'm not really moving. I'm, nothing's really happening in my life. What, what is going on? God said, you walked away from what I was pouring in you and chose to eat at another's table. I'm speaking to somebody directly right now. You chose to eat at another table. God says, I'm not at that table. You're moving and you, you, you're based on emotions. You, you, you're moving out of your emotions. He said, I, I don't want you moving out of your emotions. He said, I need you moving out of my power. I need you moving out of my glory. I need you moving out of my fire. Did not I say I'm a God of fire? Did not I say I'm a God that consumes, I burn? And God says, you shifted yourself. And I begin to deal with you. I'm talking to somebody right now. He said, I begin to deal with you. Yes, I convicted you. Yes, you convicted because you're in disobedience. You're rebelling against what I told you to do. But where I've sent you is where I've anointed for you to grow, not where you've chosen to take yourself, not where you've chosen to go. I put you where I wanted you and you walked away from that. 
God is talking to somebody right now. You left your first love trying to find love. God says, I am love. Oh. He said, you walked away from the strategic strategies, seeking words that sound better, seeking words that sound great. You walked away from that. Because somebody can put it so eloquent. God says, I'm not moved by eloquency. It is my power, my authority, my kingdom, ah, my glory that I want to pull in you, saith God. Not how eloquent someone puts words with no power, with no life. Did not I say, let the dead bury their dead? See, some of us, we want something that someone else have ask yourself this question do you feel God or is it all emotional think about that for a moment how many of you felt that ah what about Roshanda think about that for a moment is God in it or is it just an emotional show is it just an emotional scene does God do you feel his presence do you feel his glory do you feel his fire do you feel as anointing? Or are you doing like this, trying to, trying to see if you can feel it? No, you don't want to try. <laughs> you want to feel his glory. Ah. You want to feel the anointing. You want to feel his fire. You got to swallow the spirit of pride. Humble your flesh and allow the will of God to manifest in your life. Time is running out. You don't have long to obey God. Yes, I'm speaking directly to you. You don't have long to obey God. Yes, I'm speaking directly to you. Time is running out because God is ordained and purposed your life for his will, not the will of man, not what man wants you to do. God says what I've ordained and purposed your life to. I've given you a mega platform, but you've got the mature to it. You've got the mature to that place that I've ordained. And God says you will not get it until you mature to the place I've ordained for you to walk in to receive it. Saints, there's power, there's authority in prayer. Never give up means to never lose faith. You, We should not lose our faith. We should not lose our belief, our trust. There is power we call God, we believe God, we trust God, we wait on God, we seek God. We realize God made us, he molded us, he shaped us for a time such as this. When we trust God, it's not easy to keep doing the right thing when it feels like you're going nowhere. Or when it feels like you're getting nothing. But you got to stay with God and ignore what you feel. You got to trust God because what God is doing is in the spirit, not in the flesh. You say, I feel like I'm not going nowhere. Yes, you are. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. No matter how many times you fall, Proverbs 24, 16 tells us that you should always get back up again. You should always get up again and again and again. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. Repent. Get up. Get back in the presence of God. The righteous stumble, saints, but they get up. Donnie McClickland wrote a song. We fall down, but we get up. If you fall on the floor, you don't let it. If you walk and trip and fall, you may feel a bone fracker. You may feel pain when you hit that flow. But you don't let it. You might sit there for a few minutes. You get your composer. But guess what happens? You get back up. You get up. See? That's called repentance. See? Repentance plays a vital role when it comes to the things of God. We've got to position ourselves to hear him. Even when it doesn't feel good. Even when we don't like it. 
You know when you go sit down and you try something you've never eaten before. You don't know how it's going to taste until you taste it. Uh, but you may not like the taste, but it might be good for you. See, children don't like vegetables. A lot of them. They don't like vegetables. You can put sweets on their plate and they'll eat it all day long. But give them some broccoli. Give them some asparagus. Give them some okra. Give them some collard greens. Give them that. They won't eat it. They might eat the sweet peas. They might eat the sweet corn. As long as it's sweet, they like it. But this is how we are when God began to take us through. We love the good things. But when God starts dealing with us and breaking us, we don't understand. Lord, I don't understand why I'm going through this. God says, I'm breaking you. I'm molding you. I'm shaping you to be who I ordain you to be. See? When, 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 when soldiers go to boot camp, they don't like the training in boot camp. They don't like being hollered at and yelled at. They don't like the fact that they've got to do 900 push-ups. Their meals is always loaded with nothing but potatoes because it puts the weight on you. It builds you and makes you solid. They don't, see, every meal just about you eat, if you ever go to the military, every meal just about you eat will have some kind of potatoes in it because it makes you solid, builds you. If you go to the mess hall, something you eat will have potatoes on your plate. See, they know the strategy to make you, to mold but they don't discondition you physically. They condition you mentally. The word of God don't just condition you physically. It conditions you spiritually. It matures you spiritually. Because without that mature word in you, you have no weapon. You have no weapon to fight with. That's why God positions you. He takes you through the process. He removes all the negative things put in your spirit and then he put his word in you. And his word matures you. His word grows and develops you. It empowers and activates you. And when people see you later, they'll be like, wow, where they been? Where they come from? Let me give you some scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 says these words. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you in everything. Pray continuously without ceasing and in everything give thanks. The Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose by Christ Jesus. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. First John chapter 5 verse 14 says these words. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We've got to trust him. He's listening. When you ask the will of God in your life, God will manifest it. Notice what I said. When you pray and ask for the will of God, not your will, his will, God will manifest his will. He will honor his will. You may not like his will, but you ask for it, and he'll give it to you when you ask with a sincere heart while I surrender. What I'm trying to do ain't working. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. That's why he tells us in Matthew 6, 33. But, the U-T, seek ye first, look for him, first, the spiritual things, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, two things. Look for his kingdom, and look for righteousness, his right standing, where do I find that? I find that in the word of God, truth is right standing. His righteousness and all of these things, everything else you desire will be added. If you look for the kingdom, which is a spiritual domain that's inside of you, and you look for righteousness and holiness, everything that God has, has ordained through Jesus Christ for your life, the inheritance of the kingdom that is yours will begin to manifest. 
it will be added unto you. Prosperity will take over you because you surrender to the will of God. Abundance will take over you because you surrender to the will of God. You begin to seek God's will, not your will. Colossians 4 and 2 says these words. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue. Never, ever give up. Never, ever stop praying. Sometimes we go through things and we become weary. And we say, I don't, I don't even feel like praying. Don't stop. If you can't do nothing but open your Bible and say the Lord's Prayer out loud, reading it, don't stop praying. There's so much power in that one prayer. If you can just read it loudly into the atmosphere, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't stop praying and don't stop reading the Word of God. Jeremiah 29 verse 12 says these words. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will listen unto you. Jeremiah says, you stop doing what you're doing, and you will call upon the Lord. And because you call upon the Lord, ye shall go and pray. And not only that, I will listen. God says, I'll listen. I'm listening for the right tone. I'm listening for surrender. A yielded vessel, a yielded heart. Mark eleven twenty nine 29 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Whatever you believe God for when you pray, believe you've already got it. I already have a good running automobile. I already have my new home. I already have that job. I already have the blessings, meal on my table. See, believe that you receive what you've asked God for. Now, the Lord is going to instruct you. Because when you pray and believe, it requires you doing something. The Lord is going to speak and tell you to move a certain way. All you've got to do is obey. And manifestation in the timing and the seasoning of God will begin to come forth. Saints, remember, God moves in times. He moves in seasons. Not the way we think he ought to but the way he's purposed and ordained it to be. Psalms 145, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him and to all that call upon him in truth. See, when you call on God, you can't just go pray and be done with it. No, you got to pray to the Father with sincerity. You got to pray to the Father with a sincere heart in truth. What is truth? Truth is his word. Father, your word says, and then quote that scripture. Father, I believe your word. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall stand. I'm standing on your word. You said ask you and it shall be given. You said seek you and you shall find. I need a job. But Father, I'm standing on the word that you will supply my need. But your word says in Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of my need according as which is in glory. By Christ Jesus, that's your word, Father. I'm standing on your word. I'm trusting and believing you. I'm counting on and depending on you. God honors his word. See, you're praying with a sincere heart. And then watch God shift. Watch change begin to happen. Now, you're a surrendered vessel. You're a yielded vessel. You've approached the Lord with a repentant heart. And you're sincere in your spirit. God honors that. He moves on that. Acts 16, verse 25 says it this way. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They prayed. Never give up. The power of prayer. They sung. They worshiped God. And the prisoners heard them. See, sometimes you got to do it while people hear you. You be sitting on your job singing a song. God, I give you praise. People say, Lord, they're talking to themselves. No, I'm talking to Jesus. I'm in another atmosphere. I'm in another rim right now. I'm thanking God for his promotion. Because if I count on man, I'll never get one. You'd be sitting on your job praising God the whole day. Giving him glory, honor, and praise. Thanking him for strength. Thanking him for strategies to get the job done. And guess what God does? Your day goes so fast because you're in his presence. Because you're staying with him. Time just soon fly. 
And they're going to be like, oh, Lord, I'm going to be off in 10 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Another day has come and almost going on this job. Why? Because you left home with God. You kept him with you all day long. You don't do like some folk. Take him to church on Sunday. And when they leave on Sunday, they leave him at the door until Sunday next week. They don't know who he is all week long. Because they got their own agenda and their own plans. But when you but when you truly surrender, that's it. All day 24-7. When you truly yield, God is wherever you go. When you go to the doctor's office, God is there. When you go to the marketplace shopping, God is there. When you go to the service station to gas up, God is there. Why is he there? Because he's in you. He's wherever you go. He's right there with you. Somebody going to catch that. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. See, when you call on God, he'll answer you, and he'll show you great and mighty things. He says, I'm going to show you things you don't know. So you're looking for God to move on what you know. No, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, God is going to show you things you don't know. He's going to give you understanding in areas you lack. All you got to do is call on him and then listen. Be when you pray, be still and listen. When you pray, become solid. And the power of God will begin to resonate. The authority of God will begin to resonate. His glory will begin to come upon you. You literally feel a measure of power that you never felt before. Because you pray and then you be still. And you wait on God. That's okay if you fall asleep. Just be still. He'll speak in your heart. He'll speak in your spirit. Just be still and wait on him. The power of prayer. The authority that comes with prayer. To verbally speak. The deutimus. The mighty signs, wonders, miracles, and demonstrations. The fire that's in the word of God. That's in prayer. See? Never quit. Matthew. 6 verse number 7 says but when ye pray use not vain repetition you ever met that person and pray and keep repeating themselves over and over and over again use not vain repetition as the heathens do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking you don't have to keep repeating yourself over and over and over when you pray just pray believe God and move on trust him Hebrews 4 16 puts it this way let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So when you go to the Father, Lord, don't 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 be don't 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 go to the Lord fearful. Lord, you know I I know I I'm not this and I'm not that and I'm not deserving of you and uh, etc. You know you got to go to the Father. Father, your word says. See, you boldly approach God. Don't go to him fearfully, shaking and trembling. <laughs> you know, some of you seen the Wizard of Oz. Now they go to before him shaking and trembling. No, 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 no. The thing, that machine was being operated by a man if you saw the whole movie. But when you go to the Father, you go to him boldly. You stand firm in front of him in prayer. You stay there with God. And you wait on the answer. Because he's going to give you that answer. All he's waiting on you to do is ask him. All he's waiting on you to do is seek him. Trust him and rely on him. Wait. Go to him boldly. The word of God says in Matthew 18 and verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. See? Touching and agreeing. Find that prayer partner. Touch and agree with them. Believe God to move according to his will. Stand on his word. Never stop. Never give up. Never quit. Never back down. Stay in the word of God. Stay in the place of truth. And even though you can't see how, the just shall live by faith. That means you may not see your way. But if you trust the word of God and trust God, he will strategically lead you and guide you right unto him, right into his presence.
right into his presence, right into his glory, right into his fire. He'll mature you spiritually. He'll shift you. The thing won't matter no more because you walk in such measures of power and glory. You'll speak, you'll think it, and God will move. You'll seek it, and God will lead you to it. That's who he is. He wants you to know that I want you to have it. I want you to be blessed, but I want you to trust in me, not the thing. I want you to trust in me, not the people. I want you to trust in me, not in your ability. Trust me. I made you, I mold you, I shape you, and I know exactly what you need. Let us pray. Never give up the power of prayer. Father, today we thank you for your word. We give you glory and praise for the word. When we fail to trust you, when we fail to believe you, when we fail to stand on your word today, we repent right now and ask your forgiveness. Where we've been walking in our own mindsets, we ask you to give us a new mind. Bring transition in our hearts. Bring transition in our spirits. Shift us to be that son and daughter that you've ordained our lives to. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And God will get the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we'll give you all the praise. Now, where we've erred, where we failed to understand that we should never give up but that we should pray and believe the power and the authority in your word. We repent now and ask your forgiveness. Now, Father, take the word today. Activate it in our hearts, our spirits, our minds, our souls, and our body, bodies. Every crevice and every crack of your word, seed, root, and fruit. Seal it even now within us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bow to give you all the glory. All the honor, all of the praises, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, bind Satan and every satanic attack coming against your glory within us now. In Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Now, if you're on this live stream and you don't know Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, God's word teaches us in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, with the heart man believes in the righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you're on this live, or you're looking at this video in the future, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say, Father, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins, my iniquities, my ungodliness, and my unholiness. Say, I repent, and I ask your forgiveness. Say, Father, your word says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Say today, Father, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is your son and that he died and rose three days later for my sin and for the sins of the world. Father, today, I confess, I accept, I believe and I receive your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Old things now are passed away. Behold, that means look, all things are becoming new. The greatest miracle of all miracles is the miracle of salvation. There is no miracle greater than accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a spiritual shift, a spiritual transformation a change that happens when you do that. The Adam nature dies, the Eve nature dies, and you take on the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. He comes in and he begins to build, to mold and shape you. Now ask God to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. For that is the second promise. Jesus said on the day of Pentecost, I'll send you another comforter. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. On Acts chapter 2, he came in as the sound of a rushing mighty wind filled the place where they were sitting, 120 of them, and filled them to capacity, and they began to utter in other men's language. That's God's will for you. He wants to fill you to capacity. He wants to position and align you for his purpose and for his will. Ask God to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Matthew 7 and 7, Luke 11 and 9 says, Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Apostle Space, where do I read this? Open your Bibles and read in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four books of the gospel. Read them for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. It's your responsibility to learn about your new Lord and your new Savior. Well, where shall I find it? Read it in the NIV, King James Version of the Bible, the New King James Version, the Amplified Version, the East Ward Version. Read it in the Blue Bible. Put God's Word in your hearts, in your spirits. Play it. Read it in the U Version, on your tablets, on your phones. Ask God to put His Word in your hearts and in your spirits. Now, Father, today, we pray for those that have accepted you as Lord and Savior. We thank you for covering them in the blood of Jesus, for sealing them in the Holy Spirit. For you said we're covered in the blood and the blood cleanses. You said in the word that we're sealed in the Holy Spirit. We thank you right now, Father, for aligning them with purpose and destiny, allowing that to manifest and unfold before them. And we ask you now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to bind Satan and every attack of the enemy that comes against your will in their lives now. Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah's mighty name we pray. Welcome to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, write me. I'm sorry. Let me do this. I want to take the time to thank those of you that have been sowing, that have been giving during the live. We don't want to overlook those of you that the Lord has touched your hearts and your spirits to sow and to give. So we want to take the time to thank those of you. Luke 638 says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Thank you, moderators, for putting up the giving app. Those of you that give, we appreciate that. The Bible tells us in Second Chronicles 20 and 20, it says, Hear me, O Judah, believe in the Lord thou God, so shall you be established. Believe as prophet, so shall you prosper. God's word teaches us in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God, for it is he to give thee power, authority to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with the forefathers as it is unto this day. God's word teaches you and I. In Deuteronomy 1, verse 11, I will increase you a thousandfold. His word teaches us in Malachi, verses 8 through 11. The last portion of that says, I'll open the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room if they receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. And your seed shall not cast it for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. And ye shall be on the lights of land. His word teaches us in 3 John, Beloved, I desire above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thou soul prosperous. I stand on the word of God and I believe God's word will move superficially, supernaturally in your life. He will bless you beyond compare. All you've got to do is stand on the word of God. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell him glory. Thank you for your seed. Let's bless it. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare your glory, heirs that anointed. Your blessing, ah, over every seed given today. We speak the seed of your word according to Malachi. You said, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room if they receive it. We speak the seed of your word, according to Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of your need. Ah, oh, there it is. Woo. Our according is riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We speak the seed of your word, according to Deuteronomy 1, verse 11. I'll increase you a thousandfold. We speak the seed of your word over the seeds of your sons and daughters, according to 2 Chronicles 20.20. 20. Hear me, O Judah. Believe in the Lord thou God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. We speak the seed of your word over the seeds of your sons and daughters, according to Deuteronomy 8 and 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God, for it is he, there it is, that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with the forefathers, as it is this day. We stand on your word, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Bless every son and every daughter that hears your voice and obeys now and in the future. Those that even see this live recording that obeys your voice in their giving. 
We decree and declare a thousand fold return blessings. There it is. Whoop. That anointing to prosper them. There it is. Now, ah, whoo, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you the glory for the anointing of prosperity. Ah, over your sons and your daughters. Now, ha, ha. Praise you for that anointing to release unto them thousandfold measures. Bind Satan and every attack of the enemy coming against their finances now. But open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessings upon them. We stand on your word. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand. We call forth kingdom wealth, kingdom abundance over their seeds now. Thousandfold return, some sixty, some thirty, some a hundred, even in the thousandfold measure, according to Deuteronomy 1, verse 11. I will increase you. There it is. Whoa. A thousandfold. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. And we bind Satan and every hindrance of the enemy coming against the seed of yours now. Against your blessings, against your finances. Bind the attack of the enemy coming against you now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll say this. In order to see the Lord do something you've never seen him do before, you've got to be willing to do something you've never done before. You've got to step out on a measure of faith to believe God to do the impossible in your life today. Somebody tell God hallelujah. Somebody tell God glory. We praise God for those of you that have sown, those of you that are sowing online, those of you that sow to our cash app, our Zelle, not our cash app, but our Zelle and Venmo, that's barryspace at gmail.com. For those of you that need Zelle of Venmo, barryspace at gmail.com, thank you for every seed that you sow into this ministry. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for your obedience to the Father. Amen. God is getting all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. Write me, Barry Spanks Ministries, P.O. Box 38, Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Again, that's Barry Spanks Ministries, P.O. Box 38, Clemens, North Carolina, 27012. Email me at barryspates at gmail.com. That's Barry Spates, my first and last name, at gmail.com. Join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in our worship center at 721 South Main Street. Lexington, North Carolina. You can also send your gifts directly to our worship center. That's 721 South Main Street, Lexington, North Carolina. For those of you who prefer to send it to the worship center instead of the P.O. Box, 721 South Main Street, Lexington, North Carolina. Join us every Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, there in the worship center, 721 South Main Street, Lexington, North Carolina, 272. 92 is that zip code again that's 27292 feel free also to join us at 12 to 12 30 p.m every sunday morning on our live stream platforms youtube tiktok facebook basically we've been on you on tiktok and facebook we're trying to get the, the youtube platform to work i may shift from the youtube platform facebook platform to the youtube platform amen zell Zell is Barry Spates, my first and last name, Barry Spates at gmail.com for that individual asking for our Zell platform. Zell and Ben Moore is the same, Barry Spates at gmail.com. Amen. So God gives the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you so much for joining the live today. Those of you that follow us on 32 Rock, we appreciate you. Those of you that follow us at Barry Spates 32 on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm sorry, YouTube and Instagram. Barry Spakes 32, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram. And also, our main platform on TikTok is 32 Rock. Thank you so much for joining us. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on all the major platforms. Whether you're on Facebook at uh, B Spakes 1, that's my first name, first letter, last name, and, and the number one. Thank you for joining us on that platform. Or you can also join us at B Spakes 1 on YouTube. So we give God the glory down in the praise for you joining us on every platform. Saints, I give these platforms because you never know when you come on a platform and you can't find us. So I, su I would suggest and invite you to follow us on the platform. Thank those of you that have been tapping the live stream, those of you that have been subscribing, those of you that have been liking our comments, and those of you that have been commenting and dialoguing on the live. We appreciate you doing that. As I said, it pushed the live out to a greater audience. And we give God the glory down in the praise for you taking the time to do that during the live stream. So thank you so much. Moderators, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for what you do. 
Thank those of you that join us on BSLN Monday through Friday, Marriage Faith Live Network, where you can go and watch us on your Roku, or you watch us on your Apple TV, or you can watch us on the Fire TV Stick. We're on the major platforms there, so do download the app, and you can follow us. How do you get BSLN? Just go to Google and type in my first and last name, and behind my name, put BSLN, Barry Spates Live Networks, and you can pull the Android app or the iPhone app or the ISO app up, and you can download it directly into your phones and into your tablets. Amen. So we do appreciate you, and we thank you. We love you for what you do, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for praying my strength, and we continue to excel and advance the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Saints, remember, God will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And to God be all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. We are made for his glory. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, is Lord to the glory of the Father. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Have a blessed and wonderful and awesome day. No Bible study tonight. We give God the glory the honor and the praise for each and every one of you. And if you want to do Bible study, I, I invite you to go back and look at this video. I'm going to post it in just a few minutes. Never give up the power of prayer. We'll post this on YouTube. It's already on Facebook. Amen. So we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for those of you that have joined the lot. Stay encouraged. Stay inspired. Stay blessed. Have a blessed and awesome day. God bless you now. Bye-bye.